Good evening and welcome to the Eve Prosper Market Show. I'm your host, Locke Fox, and I'm here to talk to you about uh, in-game news and market reports for Eve Online. Uh, it was a busy week this week with Eve Vegas happening this last weekend. So let's let's uh, cut straight to the chase and uh, talk about some be behind the scenes show news. First, I want to thank everyone I got to meet in Eve Vegas. It was a real treat and a pleasure to see, to put names to faces and meet fans and all of that. And, uh, it's surreal being, uh, space famous. Uh, and I really do appreciate, uh, running into everybody. Got to talk some cool shop with some other people around the, uh, around the, meta and the show was great the venue was great vegas is a bit of an armpit but that's not ccp's fault um it was a real blast it was great meeting up with cap stable and meeting the hydrostatic guys face to face and interacting with the devs interacting with the fans if you get a chance to go to one of these things it is totally worth it uh, with that, uh, if you guys want to follow the show, of course, all you got to remember is Eve Prosper. That will get you to Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and the blog. If you want to support the show directly, we have a Patreon open, and we uh, sincerely thank all of our patrons there. It means a lot. Uh, it helps keep licenses up to date and pays for hosting and hardware, and it helps keep the show going uh, in a very real sense. Um, if you guys are not following the blog, there have been a couple of posts recently. Um, I'm still going to keep pimping the uh, quarter four Plex forecast. And uh, even though we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the show. And then since I didn't have a show last week, I released a blog in collaboration with the Cap Stable guys. Um, where we were investigating rumors of a CSM leak. So if you guys want to know more about that, see what it looks like in the data side rather than the, uh, rather than the swirling rumors side, uh, I go ahead and check out the blog. It's the latest post up there right now. Last, uh, just a couple of little show, show news pieces before we move on. Uh, one, there's a time change in the U.S. coming up next week. I do the show every not, every Thursday, 8 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time, which means that the show time will probably change to 0300 uh, Friday starting next week. Again, keep tuned to Twitter and uh, TweetFleet Slack if you guys uh, have any questions about that. We'll make sure to also put the uh, the live stream up in YouTube with the right uh, with the right time so you guys can tune in. Uh, also, after Eve Vegas, it was really great to meet everybody. So I was wondering uh, about reaching out to some of the other market maker kind of players. Uh, we hear a lot from. FCs and from alliance leaders and people driving meta projects like Signal Cartel or the Angel Project, but we don't hear much from the market makers. Uh, there's a few decently big names and people who've had blogs, uh, but I need some help from the viewers, you guys, to help find some people who might be industry or market pros. Um, I have a short list started already and, uh, go ahead and welcome any suggestions you guys have, uh, as far as who I should go, should go poke for those kind of things. Um, the requirements I'm going to keep pretty simple is that they're at least somewhat an expert in whatever their field is. And, uh, that it'd be really nice if they had a blog or articles to point at so that uh there's there's more content for people to dig into if they want to know more about the person so um not hard and fast rules but nice to haves if you guys know anybody please send them my way you can reach me on twitter or on the tweet fleet slack uh i'm pretty easy to get in, in touch with there and that should do everything for our show news. Sorry this took so long this week. I just really wanted to thank everyone for Eve Vegas because it was a real hoot. Um, with that, let's go ahead and move on to the news. 
Um, we're going to do this one a little bit different because the news was a little bit different this week. Um, they showcased a bunch of new tech at eVegas. This is kind of like FanFest Lite. And um, instead of going into each of the articles, I wanted to go ahead and share some of the pieces that they shared. So first, let's go look at the new capitals. Um, if you guys are not aware, the uh, the change that's coming up is that we're going to move into most capitals being combat capitals. So carriers are going to lose their logistics role. Uh, dreads are going to earn are going to be added a uh, a fleet hanger and supers and titans are going to get are going to get basically a big roll boost. Uh, what we're looking at right now are the new capitals that are supposed to be dedicated to remote reps. So uh, what's coming up right now is the Mimitar one, um, and then we'll cycle around to the Galente one. Um, they're a little thin on details at the moment. Uh, there's talk about people being able to have their uh, carriers transmogrified into... Uh, the capital they want, whether it's the, whether it's a standard carrier with offensive capabilities or these new remote logistics capitals, uh, with logistics capabilities. Details will come out. I know they want to, I know they don't want people coming into a mad bum rush to just buy a whole bunch of new capitals. Um, the skills are supposed to be seated ahead of time. Uh, the models look freaking great. More vertical supremacy, which, I mean, I'm a big fan of vertical supremacy. So, uh, and it's great to see the, the roles change. If you get a chance, I know the Matani.com was running a live stream during Eve Vegas. And if you can go watch the capital notes, there is a lot of great information in there that I really don't want to do injustice to. Uh, so go check that out. Next, moving on, uh, staying with capitals, uh, there's a new doomsday in town. Uh, instead of having a focused uh, Infina weapon, they're adding these classy, uh, weird, unique weapons. I don't really, really know what to call them specifically. What we're looking at right now is the effect for the sickle, which does a slice through space. And the idea here is that um, you're going to be able to do more damage to more people, for one. Uh, or, or at least you're going to get some area of effect damage, essentially. Number two, uh, this gives some amount of play for the, the guys getting attacked, where um, they get the opportunity to get out of the way. So a well-coordinated fleet will have the opportunity to uh, not get not get destroyed basically uh the the devs were talking about uh compelling play for both attacker and attack and the attacked so um not just the sickle here which is interesting there were a whole bunch also showed off shown off um that they didn't have effects specifically for but they were talking about like being able to uh put webs in a bubble in space or uh, my personal favorite they showcased was what they were calling the hand of God, which would be an area of effect, a remote area of effect that you, that you targeted on somebody. And then everyone within like a 10 or 15 K bubble would then be teleported elsewhere in the solar system uh, if they didn't get out of the bubbles. So um, thanks to the dogma changes coming out next week, CCP is really now open to a brand new world of uh, ship effects and these super weapons are going to be the first place we get to see them. So not really market news, but really freaking cool news nonetheless. And last citadels were finally shown off and man, uh, they they've done some blogs about the, uh, the scales of things, but this was uh, it incredibly surprising. The concept art is amazing where they're talking about uh being able to uh basically designing a station around a titan a titan dock uh the challenges of making sure that the vertical supremacy ships can actually undock out of these shit out of these um a lot of the interplay again if you get a chance to watch the stream uh they go into a ton of detail also 
what was announced. And uh, I'll be doing another blog set of articles with Eve News 24 coming out next week. Uh, the material requirements have been announced. And so uh, I'm going to go do some analysis for them. And uh, we're probably going to put out two or three pieces over the next week uh, about that. Of course, uh, I'll have the summary here on the show live, but I just haven't had any chance to uh, dig through numbers yet. Again, the 07 show was today and they basically did a really quick summary of the news of Eve Vegas. So uh, if you're really interested in the bits and bobs, go tune into that. They did address some of the common questions like, does it, is the Roqual going to actually get a place in the capital picture and Fozzie's teasing uh, that he has some ideas, but uh, it, the priority is getting the combat capitals figured out first. Um, I'm going to keep my ear to the ground on that news because I really do love the Roqual and there's a lot of people asking questions. Um, and then also next, next weekend, not this weekend, uh, the Amar championships will be live. So I hope you guys are all going to tune into that. And one last thing that came up in Eve Vegas was talking with CCP Quant. Um, the question came up about the ECB. And for those unfamiliar, the Eve Central Bank is where all confiscated ISK and PLEX come from RMT accounts and other banned accounts. And in the past, Dr. EO had been, uh, had said that CCP will not set the price of PLEX per se. Uh, but they will intervene if the price gets particularly spiky, if there is some runaway event and, uh, they'll, they'll swoop in to fix liquidity, much like the Fed might in, uh, in real life markets. Talking with CCB Quant at eVegas, though, uh, he sort of spilled the beans that, um, CCP is not keeping as close a pulse on the economy as they had under Dr. EO. Uh, there's currently only one, uh, dev tasked with any econ tasks and that CCP recur. And, um, he said that they're looking to not use the ECB at all as a balancing beam, that these confiscated plex will remain confiscated and not get liquidated into the market. Instead, the vibe I got from Quant and from Seagull is that uh, they do care about the price of Plex in the long term, and that uh, Seagull had said in one of the roundtables they would like to see the price of Plex come down, um, but they're looking to balance that using mechanics. So things like the skill packets or uh, skins would act uh, as, as more of a balance beam in the in the upcoming future. And there's a lot to be said about the picture of uh, monetization going to the future, but I'm going to leave those words to Seagull. So um, with that, let's go ahead and move on. So Plex was really interesting. Um, we've seen some sales with the Blood Raider, uh, event going on. So that's part of the downturn. Um, and I, some speculation when I was talking with, uh, people like Dirk McGurk and Shadows and Light, uh, were saying that maybe the, uh, skill point, the skill point, uh, injector system might be putting some brakes on Plex at the moment. So, I'm going to say what I said two weeks ago or three weeks ago at the start of the month. Uh, if you need to buy Plex, if you are keeping your account Plexed, buy your Plex now. Like, this is a good chance to stockpile if you need Plex for keeping your account active. Um, I do believe that there will be another good chance coming up at the end of November uh, with Black Friday. But if you need a Plex to get to no through November or get you through November and December, now is an excellent time to buy. If you're looking to invest, I think the prices are still a little bit high at the moment. Um, I would like to, I would, I would say buy in if you can get under 1.15 billion. Uh, but that's kind of a, that, that would be kind of an, a sweet deal that I don't think you're really going to get access to. I also find it interesting that the um, Plex volumes seem to be healthier than they have been lately. Uh, not sure if this has to do with eVegas hype or um, reactivating accounts through the Blood Harvest event. 
Um, but Plex volumes are staying pretty healthy at the moment. Moving on to the one year view again, uh, we're seeing a pretty decent, decent, uh, heat. Um, again, we're not seeing the sustained heat we saw last year in volumes. Um, if we compare it to year to date, we're still seeing about like five or 10% less volume getting moved. Um, but let's, let's go in, let's go through no November before we really start, uh, saying that the sky is falling. The emperor has no clothes. Um, again, we're getting back to a stable spot where, uh, we're getting back in line with the 60 day moving average, which is where I would like to see it. Um, prices are really healthy at the moment and it's a, like I said, a great chance to buy in. Uh, if we look at the buy and sell margins on RMT tokens, that's Plex's multiple pilot training certificates and pilot body resculpt certificates. Um, so there was this wonderful pattern the last few weeks, the last few times where Plex would peak and fall, but then multiple pilot training certificates would peak afterwards. We saw this happen like three times where the sell prices for the training certificates were way ahead of, were lagging the, the spike and crash of the Plex. And I was thinking that was a really interesting uh, pattern, but between the new buy and sell, uh, the bulk buy uh, options, and probably spoiling it right here on this show. It looks like that pattern has basically gone the way of the dodo. Uh, we're still seeing maybe a one day or two day, uh, lag if you were, uh, particularly active. But, uh, the, the particular pattern, uh, where it was a good day or two and it was higher than the, than the spike, um, looks like that pattern's over. So if that was your market, please write your hate mail to lockfox in game or prosper market show at gmail.com. I would love to hear about how I ruined your market. Moving on to the buy and sell margins on Plex itself. Not a ton to say. The margins are a little bit wide at the moment, so I'd expect the buy orders to narrow. Uh, but I didn't get a chance to pull again in the last day, so uh, this might be anywhere up to 24 hours too old at the moment. So um, things seem to be straight and flat and healthy through the weekend. I think it's a great chance to buy in if you need it. Uh, moving on to the Plex prediction. Um, so I have a few extra graphs this week. Um, this is the one I published on the blog. Uh, I have said over and over again that my problem wasn't that I didn't, it was that I thought the slopes were good, but I couldn't pick what the zero starting point was going to be, uh, just because I had no idea where to put it. So right now we're looking at a 60 day rolling average as the, uh, as the starting point. And if we move over to a 45 day rolling average, we're starting to look a little bit healthier. And if we go all the way back to a 30 day rolling average, well, now we're finally inside the bands, even if we're in the higher, uh, tiers, um, I can go ahead and republish this data. If you guys are really interested in it, I'm more than happy to be, uh, transparent about it. Um, I really only changed one set of numbers, which was, uh, where the time zero was the rest of it stayed exactly the same. Um, I still like the bounding box here uh, for the end of the year that we're at about 1.3 to 1.4 uh, billion here here at the end. Uh, it's just that when I start the thing, it, it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, if you look, the, the slopes don't change. So uh, Maya Culpa will we'll try to be better about this in the future. Um, and I'd love to hear you guys' feedback on it. Moving on to minerals, uh, the last show we did was really interesting because Tritanium was on quite a tear, peaking up above 6.2. Um, since the announcement, uh, Trita Tritanium's lost a little bit of heat, coming back down towards 6.0. Um, I think this is partially because the Citadel announcement came out and there are not as much minerals required as I was expecting. Um, and with the new capitals, 
uh, and the way that they're talking about being able to transition, there might not be as much demand for low end minerals to build new capitals. So you don't have to have a mad land grab to get these ships out the factory doors so that you end up, you know, on a, on a race, the first, you know, month of a patch, uh, trying to get these things out the door to, to players. So, um, I think that we're in a re relatively stable spot. Um, it could break either way. I think it's going to uh, cozy up to 6.0, um, and we'll see what happens with more news. Uh, next is Pyrite, which again, we saw a similar pattern. We got up to 11.5 and had stayed relatively stable between the 11.4, 11. Point, sorry, got up to 11.8. And we've been staying stable between 11.4 and 11.8, but it looks like we're, see we're seeing a sustained decline. Um, again, I have a hard time believing this is going to go below 11.2, but it's in a weird spot. It's hard to predict uh, specifically. So uh, keep an eye on this. If you need to stockpile, I think getting in at anywhere from 11 to 11.2 is a decent spot if you're going to use it. Uh, I don't think that that's a good spot if you're looking to buy and hold. I would be waiting for a price under 11 if you're looking to actually speculate in pyrite. Uh, Mexilon, which again has been my particular darling since uh, we did a, a price alert on that uh, a little over a month ago, um, looks like it's losing a little bit of heat. Uh, again, this is probably due to uh, Citadel's not, being at, not needing as many minerals as everyone expected, and also probably due to less expected capital demand. I don't think that this slump down to 65, I think we're going to come back up off of that. I think that there's going to be a decent number of the new capitals needed to be built. I think that uh, with dreads and carriers getting a new role, more people will be wanting them. And I don't know if, I don't know how many of those are going to end up getting traded from people who don't want to use their carriers and dreads now that they're sexy. Um, the only point I have is that I'm hoping that dreads the the subcapital dread weapon that they they were talking they were teasing about uh, gets a little bit more information. The the initial numbers look really weird. Uh, there was some talk about it on Reddit this week, but I am not a EFT warrior, so I'm going to default to the uh, the people who actually really get guns more than I do. Um, to talk about getting that into a decent place. But again, I think that the, that locking in decent roles for capitals will drive the usage destruction and, uh, consumption of capitals, uh, up significantly. So I still think Mexilon is a buy. I still think that, uh, if you need to stock up 65 is a great price. If you want to speculate, uh, sub 65 is a decent buy-in, uh, looking for a 70, 70 a unit price in my book. Again, if we look at the buy and sell margins, um, we're down under the, uh, under the 65 line at the moment. Um, I think this might just be that we got a little too hot ahead of the change that maybe, uh, if you believe that there was a leak and people were being, uh, untrustworthy that, uh, they may have bought in too much and are pushing out, but I still think that uh, 65 is a decent floor, and I think 70 will be will be the future sometime by the end of the year again. Um, again, keep an eye on this, and if it changes, I will change my tune. So that's that's where we are right now. Isogen took a pretty decent drop uh, over the E Vegas weekend. Um, now we're under 120. Again, I think it's the same same story we're seeing everywhere else. Citadels don't need as much. Uh, capitals may have overspeculated. Um, I think that the 115 to 120 band is a fair price, uh, but I wouldn't stockpile or on either side, either as an industrialist or a trader. Uh, Noxium is a much more interesting picture. We saw it spike during the Vegas announcements. Um, and I'm really not sure why this might be again around citadels. I haven't dug into the numbers quite yet. We'll be doing that this weekend. Um, I need more, more time with Noxium to tell you which way it's going. We spiked up against 500 and we're crashing down pretty hard to 480, but the action isn't over here. So keep a close eye on Noxium. 
Um, and then Zydrine is finally going where I said it was going to go for the last frickin' month and a half. Uh, we are on track to hit a thousand, pro- maybe not this weekend, but next weekend. Um, I've been saying this for a while. I think that uh, Nullsec is overproductive in the high ends. And uh, 1100 was a high price. And as more miners work in in Nullsec, we expect to see more Zydrine and more Megasite hitting the market. So I'm expecting 1000 to be a decent floor. But again, uh, the markets could prove me wrong. I think we'll we'll coast into 1000 and that'll be that way till maybe about the end of the year. And then we might see more downward pressure in January. Megasite, also same story, same reasoning. We were at 1400 for a few weeks and uh, looks like E Vegas popped all that speculation and we're down to almost 1300 right now. Um, again, same story. I think 1300 again is going to be the decent floor. It could go down to 1250. Um, not sure what exactly is going on. Well, no, I, I do know what's going on. Again, I think Nullsec is overproductive and we should see the price continue to fall. So get out. And, and if you're a producer, I would hold on until maybe 1250 before trying to stockpile. Um, and then last of the minerals, uh, Morphite, I'd been saying all summer was way too high and is cruising back down. I still think the floor of this is near 10 K, uh, before we started doing the big hop, but, uh, this 11.5, 11,000 mark, uh, might be where it is stable. I'd have to look more into the tech two ship market to see just how much is getting consumed. Um, we may be in a, in a production slump, uh, but we'll see how things go uh, after the Brain of the Box re- releases next week and with Citadels due to come out at, in January. Um, there might be some decent chances to stockpile. So if you need more fight, I would keep a close eye on this. And then last, uh, just to look at the buy and sell margins to see if there's anything particularly interesting. Uh, again, the spread on Megasite is pretty wide. Uh, the downward pressure on Pyrite is really strong. And, uh, most everything else looks pretty decent. Uh, again, Morphite buy orders under 11, 11 K is a little bit worrying to me. So we'll see where that goes. Moving on to fuel, uh, fuel markets have stayed pretty unchanged at the moment. Um, again, I think Caldari isotopes are grossly over, over, uh, valued. Um, I had expected with, with, uh, Nuller Bohr's announcement on uh, on the fuel for on the fuel for the services on Citadels that uh, the prices would start to normalize towards eight hundred. Uh, that we'd see a rise in the prices for the low, the not so used uh, isotopes, and perhaps uh, a dump of uh Caldari isotopes expecting that um he had teased during the e Vegas uh talk that um you were going to need all isotopes to fuel citadels but you were going to be able to do basically some transmutation that if you had a bunch of one isotope and none of another that you could uh pay more in the isotope you have to substitute out the isotope you don't and I was hoping that this would close the uh, the gap between everything, bringing them all back into normal. So um, if you believe me, then what we're looking at is an excellent opportunity to buy in, uh, especially on Galente and Amar and Mimitar isotopes. Um, we may even see growth in Caldari isotopes tracking to 900. The problem is with Caldari tracking so much higher than everything else, I have this worry that uh, Imperium is going to come in and just dump the price, that all of their leadership is going to finally say go, and they're going to dump uh, a whole bunch of this stuff onto the market and uh, pop any possible margins. So if I were a speculator, I'd actually be looking at uh, Galente and, and Amar Ice personally. Uh, I don't like speculating in Minmatar Ice, but that's a personal problem. Um 
and I'd be targeting an 800 per unit price. Now this might require more information from Nullerbore to finally kick over, but uh, this would be a decent chance to jump in the market before uh, before people understand what's going on. Uh, next, fuel blocks were especially strange. We're, uh, though we saw, we're seeing much stability in the isotopes. We're seeing instability in the fuel blocks, uh, especially Galente. Um, if you have a chance to build them and, and dump them, uh, go ahead and do so. The uh, prices on the PI components should be coming down. And if you're rather prudent and put in a, put in a factory order tonight, uh, you might actually get a chance to make a, a few extra bucks. Um, again, Kaldari is jumping up really high. Uh, all of the all of the isotopes are jumping up. The problem is that the isotopes aren't, and that is the weirdest thing about this. So if you're needing fuel blocks, I would hold off or use buy orders if I have to. Um, maybe have to build your own at the, the rate prices are until things stabilize. But I expect uh, a lot of this noise to wash out uh, by early in, by the end of the weekend. And then moving on to the last sec the last main section of the show, outliers. Uh, we're going to start where we always do in advanced materials. Uh, things have been really quiet in advanced materials for the last few weeks, but uh, if you look, fermionic condensates had a huge spike, but that looks speculative. Uh, prices should be back down, uh, hopefully over the weekend. Um, and hypersynaptic fibers are way down, which is particularly weird. Um, this might be the rolling pop I was talking about where, where, uh, as, as there are more and more, uh, miners and, and POS reactors out there, uh, we're going to see things higher up the complexity chain start to become less profitable. Uh, we saw this happen with ceramic fibers. We saw this happen with, we're seeing it happen with nanotransistors. We saw it happen with phenolic composites. Um, as, as we go up the chain, we may even see metamaterials, uh, start to go down. Again, I keep expecting this to mean that, uh, moon miners are going to, to, uh, shut down their chains, but people keep producing. So, uh, this would be a good chance to get in cheap on hypersynaptic fibers and, uh, some of the metamaterials. And if we look again at the, at the hypersynaptic fibers, again, it looks like this is the best price you're going to see at about, uh, 8.5, uh, a little under 8.5 K. And if you need a stockpile now is a great chance to do so. I expect the price to stay level though. So, uh, you may not get a chance to look really brilliant, uh, and, and save a bunch of money until later. Um, and neodymium, if we look down at the, uh, moon products has been shooting up. Uh, this is an R64, I believe. With the uh, new Aegis Sov system, fights are happening more often at money moons, and I expect to see more instability in these uh, high rarity products in the R62 and R32 mark, R64 and R32 markets. Um, I can't really tell you where without uh, merging a battle report with uh, the the expected moon outputs that I have, uh, but the the prices are high, though I don't expect them to stay high for very long. Um, and let's see, I think that washes out to, uh, I think this washes out into nano transistors. If I'm not, for, if I'm not, if I'm rem remembering correctly. And then last of the moon products is Promethium again, tracking up. I don't, I think this is an R32. I'd have to double check. Uh, but it was an interesting one tracking up so hot as, as it, as it goes along. Again, I'm not sure what this goes into specifically, but uh, expect those reactions to bubble up over the next week or so. So if you want to go do the, do the legwork, uh, you might be able to find out a decent deal. Moving on to PI, uh, robotics are finally losing their, 
their uh, heat. Uh, we've been seeing a pretty steady climb up above 76k, and uh, with the with the Vegas announcements, it looks like we're tracking back down again. Um, this could also be due to the Blood Raider, the uh, Blood Raider event, bringing more accounts back and people using their PI chains to uh, perhaps earn a plex uh, during the during the promotional period. So um, this might be temporary. I, I, I have a hard time calling which way things are going to go in the lower end PI markets, but in the higher end PI markets. Holy cow. So, one, I would like to pat myself on the back because I told you guys back in January to invest in P4s. Uh, the prices have been low for the last year, and I was sure that we would need that, that, that the Citadels were going to need these because, uh, it would mean that we'd need a lot more, um, a lot more high grade PI to keep these, these things fed. And as soon as the announcements came out and saw that they were comprised of so much high end PI, holy cow, did the prices go completely fucking bonkers. So I want to know if anybody bought in, um, because that would be amazing. I have a small, small stockpile, uh, nothing enough to really, uh, write home about billions and billions, but, uh, I fucking called it <laughs> to be completely honest. I called this one and I felt like an idiot all year and now I get to feel like a super genius. So, uh, high five for me. Um, I'll be writing more about this in, uh, for Eve News 24 this next week. Moving on to ships, uh, let's start with the Procurer. We have been seeing it stay very stable through the summer and then uh, suddenly interesting. Um, I know I highlighted this a few weeks back and it procced again for uh, a particular spike. Um, this is a great chance to sell off if you have any left. Um, the with the lowering prices of all the minerals, I expect this to fall back down under two under 24 mil. Yeah, under 24 mil. And uh, I think that I think that we're, we're due for this to come down pretty sharply uh, and overcorrect. But I, I wouldn't really play. I, I wouldn't play with these bounces ups, ups and downs. But that's because I'm a coward and I don't believe in the. Uh, the day trading like pendants and uh, ladders and all those other weird things. So uh, moving on to the Armageddon Navy issue uh, spiked over the week. Um, again, this isn't a super popular ship uh, and it's probably coming down and the action's probably over by the time I've, I've broadcasted this, but it was interesting to see it uh, peak up to 400 million. Um, off of a steady price of 300 million. <clears throat> so, um, not sure if this is due to the championships or give me one sec. Not sure if this is because of the succession trials or if this is just an actual shortage. Um, I expect anyone with a Mar LP to destroy this market. So if you're listening now and the prices are still high, uh, sell, 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 sell. And if you don't have a MRLP, sorry. Uh, moving on again to the Bellicose, we've seen it stay, uh, we've seen it rather tumultuous, uh, and we're tracking up really high at 12 million. But I expect this to end real soon, especially in the face of, uh, low mineral prices. Um, if you have them and you want to sell them, right now is the best chance you're going to get but I think they're going to fall hard down to 10 mil over the weekend and into the next week. Um, I'll have to make a note to double check this next week to see how right or wrong I was. Uh, another interesting one that spiked a couple of weeks ago and is spiking now for the other reason is the Astart, Astarte. Not sure which way to say that one. Um, the prices spiked up spectacularly over the 30, 300 million mark. Uh, 
But this, I believe, is another uh, case of the pattern I've told you guys about where um, the price gets really, really good. And then T2 producers see that the price is really, really good. And then they destroy their own margin by overproducing. So I think we're at the bottom of this particular swing at 300 mil. But uh, we could still fall down to uh, 250 mil, depending on the way that advanced materials go. Uh, you'd have to, I'd have to rerun the numbers uh, to know specifically what the final price of this would be. Uh, next, the venture has been interesting. We saw it spike up a few weeks ago, uh, probably ahead of uh, due to the expected use with the new ice miner. Um, yeah, the new ice miner um, frigate that uh, looks pretty interesting. Totally spacing on the name, uh, but prices seem to be coming back down again. I'd expect this to slide down under the three million mark. Um, uh, with the with the way minerals are going. Um, and again, I don't like stockpiling on T1 ships to build the expected T2 product. And because uh, the, the honest truth is that a producer can just produce them ahead of time rather than buying out and stockpiling right there. So uh, that's that's the way I feel about ventures. Another one. Now this one I'm I'm probably going to post on Reddit as soon as we're done, even though uh, I'll probably get no karma for it. Um, I reran the analysis from the CSM, uh, the, the CSM investigation, just adding the E Vegas talk in and I find it rather interesting. So the E Vegas line is right on the right when the, uh, the, talk the capitals talk ended and the reason geckos were going down was because uh with the with carriers getting the the new squadron feature they're not going to be able to use non-capital uh drones what this means is that every carrier that had geckos because if you have a carrier and don't have geckos i consider you i, I think you're doing it wrong uh, that the prices are going down and they're going down sharply. So, uh, I expected us to go down to 70 million and stay there. That was my prediction during the event. I was like, oh, we're just going to chop off 20 million off the market. Uh, and people are just going to cry and cry and cry. But my buddy Blake Armitage over at uh, k162space.com, who's posting again, and you guys should go read his blog because we're best bros, um, predicted the opposite. He said that the volatility uh, the volatility measures said that uh, you should hold at the absolute least, and the prices are rebounding. So uh, we're back up to 90 mil. Um I had been saying, so for the last few weeks, I had been saying that uh, buying sub 90 mil, if you need to use geckos, is a good price. Um, I'm revising that particular uh, prediction down to 80 mil. Um, I still expect the steady state like bargain price to be 70 mil. Um But again, the market's proven me wrong. There was a huge panic over the weekend but a bunch of prudent investors bought up all the markets. So um, I'm having a really hard time predicting which way this is going to go. So we're going to, we're going to run this analysis again next week um, just to, just to uh, do our due diligence. Um, I find it particularly interesting, this slump uh, from 95 to 90 mil ahead of the event um, not sure if that's because of the, the keynote should only be like a day behind. Um, so I don't know where this weakness particularly came from. That's a little bit weird, but, uh, we're Blake was right. I was wrong. So go, go, uh, go stop by his blog and tell him how awesome he is. Uh, now on to modules. I only got a couple this week. Um, the Armor Explosive Hardener 2s tracked way down. i um, not really sure what's driving this. I mean, they are a basic commodity for fittings. 
Don't know if this is overproduction or under cost. Uh, the prices are really weird at the moment, but it's a great chance to buy in if you want to speculate. Uh, Dread Garista's cloaking device. I know that I haven't highlighted a high meta item in a while, but uh, this looks like um, due to the the new uh, mining frigate and perhaps uh, expectation to use these on super caps that uh, the prices spiked up during the weekend and they're tracking back down to what looks like 300 million. Um, again, these allow you, these are standard cloaks that allow you to uh, fly faster cloaked. Um, so these are great for your black ops, for instance. Uh, not sure exactly what's going on, but keep an eye on this one. And uh, ocular filter standard, so the plus three perception implant, spiked hardcore this last week. And I'm, I have no friggin' idea why. Uh, volumes are not particularly high. We're just seeing the standard 450, 500 a day kind of uh, behavior. But these should be super stable over the over the course of time, and they are absolutely not. So um, keep an eye on these if you can get them under 19 mil. I think is what they are. Uh, absolutely buy them because <laughs> uh, this behavior is super strange. Um, I always expect if something this good happens that uh, faction warfare loyalty point guys would just destroy this market. And then the Heavy Nose Ferratu 2. Um, again, not sure what's driving this. Looks like a pretty decent buyout, but the prices are coming back down. We should be back down to uh, 5 million over the weekend. So I don't think this is a particular opportunity. I just found it strange that we've seen uh, some particular demand for this product. All right, last part to finish off the show now that we're running super late is the prediction review, the part where I find out if uh, I tell you guys if I can actually do this job or suck at it. Uh, the Gila has been one we've been tracking for the last few weeks, um, and I keep predicting it the wrong way. Uh, we saw it crash down pretty hard before Vegas, and it's coming back up to the 250, 260 million mark. Um, we're at a spot that it's probably peaked if you got in uh, under 250, I would be selling. Uh, I don't think it can go much higher, but uh, this one's been hard to predict per se. So, uh, I'll leave that one to, uh, faction traders myself. Uh, moving on to T3 cruisers. We had been tracking these the last few weeks. Uh, but all of the heat seems to be out. Uh, we saw the Legion, for instance, stayed higher, stayed high for longer than I expected. Same with the Proteus, but everything is coming down to, uh, a 1.6 million, uh, excuse me, 160 million mark. If you need to buy in a T3 cruiser, now is an excellent chance to do so. If you're a producer, I would be, uh, uh, reducing those lines if you were producing for the, uh, high prices. Uh, moving on to the uh, back to the CSM investigation piece, uh, just really quick. Siege Module Ones was one of the really weird ones I highlighted on the show. Uh, these don't look like they're moving very much, uh, especially after Eve Vegas. So whoever bought them up here, I'm so sorry. That looks like just some really terrible trading on your part. Uh, same with the Triage Module. We saw that peak. Uh, specifically right before the episode 40. And if you bought in on these particular spikes, um, you might be vindicated when the details come out for the new capitals. But that 100 million mark versus the falling price of minerals, and these are mostly minerals, uh, I don't think you're getting your money back. And then Drum Control Unit was another one that spiked weird. Um, again, if you were one of the guys who bought up above 80 million or in the 75 million mark, I don't think you're getting your money back. Um, we'll see how this works with, uh, with a new squadron mechanic. I might end up being wrong, but, uh, if you were trying to be a cheater who prospered, I don't think you did. <laughs> so, um, 
And then last, the Hawk. Uh, we saw it particularly high the last few weeks, and we're coming down way into a trough. This would be a great chance to buy if you want to speculate. I think we're at the bottom of this particular uh, slump, uh, sub 25 million. Um, not sure who's going to need them or when they're going to need them, but this uh, 23.5 million mark would be a great chance to buy in and hold uh, looking for something like a 28 or a 30 million uh, sell off sometime in the next two months. And with that, we're going to go ahead and end the show. Uh, I'm your host, Lock Fox, and uh, thanks again for tuning in, especially those who tune in live. Uh, we're usually on at 8 p.m. Mountain Time on Thursdays, but uh, with the U.S. time change happening next week, I believe that that moves our showtime in-game to Friday 0300. Keep tuned to Twitter and the and YouTube for specifics. Um, I'll put up the uh, the next show as soon as I can. Sorry, if you want to follow the show, all you got to remember is Eve Prosper. That will get you to Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and the blog. Um, also, if you want to support the show directly, we do have a Patreon, and your support is supremely appreciated. Again, to everyone I ran into in Eve Vegas and all those I didn't, thanks again. It was a real treat meeting up with everyone. Um, it was a super blast to put names to faces and see everyone and go to a real Eve event with uh, my people, the Eve nerds. And uh, we'll be back next week. Again, I'm your host, Lock Fox. This has been the Eve Prosper Show, and we will be back next week with more market news and graphs.